This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we're doing things a little bit differently. Let's get to it. So I don't normally make videos like this, but there's something going on in the gaming world evolving around Baldur's Gate 3, and it needs to be talked about. So today we're going to talk about it, and we're going to start with an article by Game World Observer. There's been a bunch of articles by different companies on this, but I felt this one was the best put together. And this article is titled, Why Devs Consider Baldur's Gate 3 an Anomaly and Not a new standard for the RPG genre. Before I read this, I want to make something very clear. We should not hold indie studios to the same standards that we hold AAA studios to. But when a AAA studio comes along and creates a game that sets a new standard for a genre, we should 100% hold all other large AAA studios to the same standard. We already do this all the time. It's nothing new. And we should not let game devs dictate to us gamers what we decide is the new standard for whatever game standard we have decided to set. Okay, on to the article. It states, a few weeks prior to its launch, Baldur's Gate 3 looks like one of the most promising RPGs in recent memory. However, some devs are urging players not to rate all other games in the genre by such high standards, appealing to Larian Studios' unique combination of vast experience and resources. This all started with a Twitter thread by Strange Scaffold head Exalibur Nelson Jr., the studio best known for Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator and the upcoming Max Payne-like shooter El Paso Elsewhere. So let's take a look at this thread and exactly what this guy had to say. He states, like a lot of people, I'm deeply excited about what the lovely folks at Larian accomplished with Baldur's Gate 3, but I want to gently, preemptively push back against players taking that excitement and using it to apply criticism or a raised standard, and he puts that in quotes, to RPGs going forward. Then he goes on to say, you can't separate a game from the process used to build it. So let's take a look at what Larian is taking into the development and final version of this game. Okay, so half of the stuff that he states here is a completely moot point, and it's just him finding reasons to push back against this and hold other games to a higher standard, and I'm about to rip his thread apart. So he starts off with, the dev cycle is stretching back to 2017. 2017 to 2020. 23 is six years. That is absolutely nothing out of the ordinary for game development. Six years time is what you would expect, sometimes even longer, for a game of this scale. So it's a completely moot point. And I can give you an example of this. The recent game, it was super popular for a while until they screwed it up, Diablo 4, started production six years ago. And if you go over to the wiki for it, I'll link it down below, it says Blizzard Entertainment President Mike, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name, stated that Diablo 4 took more than six years to develop. So it was more than six years. Plenty of other games have taken anywhere around that time when they are at this size and scope. So his point that this was six years in development is absolutely pointless. Next, he goes on to state that two massive games and their definitive editions worth of tech and industrial knowledge to draw from. For almost any AAA studio, this is nothing new. This isn't even anything new for a lot of indie studios or even smaller studios. If they've made more than one game, their first game was successful. Now, was it massively successful? Maybe, maybe not, but it was successful and it gave them knowledge to make another game and make a better game in hopes that it is going to be more successful than the last. His next point is super successful early access period lasting three years, providing crucial community feedback, bug hunting, and cash flow. Okay, this is another completely pointless point. Pretty much any game can make their game early access. Lots of games put their game out there in an early access state. On top of that, a three-year early access period is absolutely nothing. Lots of games have early access periods that are even longer and have been successful. An absolutely fantastic example of an early access game that has been overwhelmingly successful is Valheim, which released in 2021 and is going to probably not be complete for around three years. Over 400 developers in seven different offices around the world, not including outsourcing partners. This is absolutely nothing new for any AAA studio. Many AAA studios have more than 400 developers, more than seven different offices, and outsource tons of stuff to partners. Then he goes on to state at number five, the licensed brand and world of one of the largest entertainment IPs in the world at the apex of its popularity with the rise of the actual play movement and movie. Now, D&D is popular for sure, but it's gotten a lot of flack here recently. 
recently in the past six to eight months. And the IP isn't everything. Yes, the IP is going to help their sales, but this literally has nothing to do with the size and technical scope of the game that they've created. Your IP has very little to do with that. And one could argue that a brand new IP could be used to create just as big and complex of a game as this one looks like it's going to be. And a great example of this is what Rockstar did with many of their games, including stuff like Red Dead Redemption. That was a brand new IP that is created by them and was and still is massively popular. Then he goes on to state, Larian is coming into this swinging with a gigantic weight of expectation to deal with, but they're also doing it with immense amount of wind, direct experience, resources, special tooling, etc. at their backs. Once again, for AAA companies, this is nothing new and should be the standard for every single game that they set out to create. Then he just goes on to not really give any more points and just cry about the gaming industry and how bigger isn't always better and that mega games can crush a studio and that if Larian tries to make a bigger game than this, that they may crush themselves and all of this other nonsense. I'll scroll through it here slowly and you can pause and read it at your own will. So let's take a look at this studio strange scaffolding and some of their games. As you can see here, I honestly don't even know why this guy thought that he needed to weigh in on this subject in the first place because his games aren't even in the same playing field as a AAA studio. So until he's made a game that is even one third as successful as anything Larian has put out, don't be trying to tell gamers what we should and shouldn't set as a standard for a specific genre. Because the companies you're running your mouth about are out there building mega structures and you're still home playing with Legos. So let's head back to the article and take a look at what some other devs have had to say about this. How did other developers react to this take on Baldur's Gate 3? Nelson Jr.'s thread went viral with many developers from AAA companies and indie studios stepping in to support the main point. For example, Grimlore Games senior narrative designer Rebecca Harwick noted that while she expects Baldur's Gate 3 to be a once-in-a-lifetime RPG, she hopes no one expects a 10, 20, 40 person team to make one. And no one does. No one's out here going, your little tiny indie studio should make something that is equal to what 400 people can make. No one is saying that. What we are saying is that every other AAA studio out there has a lot to live up to now, and we expect them to live up to it because they have the money, they have the backing, they have the manpower. Insomniac Games Designer Manager Ryan McCabe urged others not to use a singular game to set expectations for everyone developing RPGs because of it. He states, and I quote, this is a great thread about why using a singular game to set expectations for everyone developing titles in a genre isn't useful and instead foolhardy. So just in case you're unaware, Insomniac Games has made Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, they're making the new Wolverine game. They also make Ratchet and Clank and a whole bunch of other wildly popular games. According to a quick Google search, they have over 400 employees. Larian has over 400 employees. So there's no reason that this AAA studio can't make a game equal to what Larian has done here. They've had wildly successful games on multiple different platforms, released multiple times on different platforms, and they have an equal or greater number of employees. So tell me, Mr. Ryan McCabe, why Insomniac can't do the same thing that Larian has done here? Why is that impossible for you all to do? Because from where I'm standing, this just looks like you being a crybaby because you don't want to work as hard as they did to make something as fantastic as what they've made. Next, we have Obsidian Entertainment designer director Josh Sawyer noting that having the foundation set and the funding to build things on your own terms is invaluable. Yes, yes it is, and many AAA studios have that. This is not about downplaying talented people working on Baldur's Gate 3, but about acknowledging this case is atypical for the games industry. No, it's not. Other games have done it before and they set that standard and then other game developers have followed that standard. James Berg, senior technical program manager for accessibility at Xbox, noted that the amount of dev effort put into Baldur's Gate 3 could equal two or three other games in the RPG genre combined. He states that it's rockstar level nonsense for scope. Only a few studio groups could ever try this. Now, I want to point out one thing here. He's equating this to Rockstar Games. Okay, I'll take that. Rockstar Games makes their games as large and as massive and as complex as they do with well over 2,000 employees. Larian Studios has some 
somewhere around 400 or more employees. So what you're saying to me is that Larian Studios with around 400 or so employees managed to create a game equal to what Rockstar was able to create with over 2,000 employees. But yet other studios won't be able to manage the same thing. And then there's a lot more of the same thing. Other developers just not wanting to work as hard as Larian did, but wanting your money and to set high price points for their games because that's basically what this boils down to. But I want to read one more to you because I find it absolutely hilarious. The Diablo 4 senior designer Chris Bowser also agreed with Nelson Jr. saying that it is important to remember that not all studios operate under the same conditions. He compared Baldur's Gate 3 to Ultima 7, the favorite RPG of Larian founder Sven Vicky. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce any of these names. Anyway, that's a game that had 12 years of prior games feeding into it. Many of these AAA studios have 12 or more years of game experience in whatever game genre they're making. So if they make RPGs, there's a pretty good chance that they have 12 years or more game experience making RPGs. Then he states, if we were to look at this new benchmark, we would need to then focus on creating conditions just like with TikTok. But people too often only look at the fruits of labor and not the labor itself. Same as it ever was, I guess. Same deal with people wondering why there are so few artists painting like Renaissance masters. This is all coming from a dude who was part of the team who thought it was a good idea to take their pretty successful game. And when players were complaining about there not being enough build diversity in the game because of a lot of abilities and stuff in their game were absolutely terribly designed, instead of buffing those other things and bringing them up to the standard of what was currently considered quality builds in Diablo 4, him and his team thought it would be a good idea to nerf all of the stuff that made the builds popular that everybody was playing into the ground to the point that they were as trashed as all of the other abilities and stuff that people were complaining about and thought that that was good game design. On top of that, they also thought that it was a good idea to take things like cooldown reduction because it was considered widely popular and a standard in most builds and nerf it into the ground because they basically didn't want it to be considered a standard in builds in a game that relies on cooldown reduction for builds. I'm sorry, but any game that has cooldowns and has a stat that reduces cooldowns is always going to be popular and a standard in builds for said game. Bro, you don't even belong in this conversation. The adults are talking. Get over there to the kitty table, sit down and shut up. Not to mention he's from Blizzard Entertainment, an absolutely massive company that should have zero problems making anything equal to what Larian Studios is doing with Baldur's Gate 3. And I don't even think this game is what a lot of people and a lot of these devs are expecting this game to be. This game has a ton of story into it. Yes, but is it super deep mechanically otherwise? It's got a little bit of some deep mechanics there, but nothing that we haven't seen anywhere else. Where this game is really going to shine is in the absolute massive amount of dialogue and stories that they are telling in this game. That's it. And that is something that should not be hard for any other AAA studio to do if they set out to make an RPG game that is heavily story driven. The devs that weighed in on all of this are a bunch of devs that don't want to work hard, don't want to put in the time and effort that Larian Studios has put into their game, but yet they want to charge you 70 or more dollars for their trash broken games that they use you to beta test because they called their game a released version when actually it's early access and they're using you to fix it, and then also fill it full of microtransactions so they can milk you for as much money as possible. And we should not let these people dictate to us what we consider a new standard for any game genre. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more of my content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.